This month's uh, studio update is coming to you from the Naira Sculpture Park in the Cradle of Humankind uh, where the uh, sculpture exhibition opens today. The painting exhibition opened on Thursday. In order to do the installation and think about the installation while I was in the studio, I took uh, a lot of photographs. Um, it was in the summer and the place was completely green and lush. Uh, but I'm so glad we installed it just before spring. Um, in this environment because with uh, some of the trees and the whiteness in the trees or the different uh, shapes of the branches um, as a backdrop to a lot of the sculptures they really pop out uh, because of the color as well. Uh, while installing some of the sculptures and uh, think of where they should be placed because uh, it's always different in uh, reality than on what you see on photographs or in the studio creating my sculpture and it's got buildings around it. But uh, we're standing between uh, some of the initial sculptures and looking out over two different lakes at different levels and I uh, immediately thought that this blue sculpture with the uh, red head with the one arm sticking out uh, would be ideal uh, for the space. I created this sculpture in 2006 and it's called From a Dizzy Height. Uh, from the outset I wanted to create uh, lines and also negative spaces that you can see through. It really fascinated me how uh, with a long wire welded together I could almost draw in air. And uh, it was a bit tricky building it up from the, from the ground up because uh, it's three meters high. And when the head started to tilt forward uh, I thought great that's, that's all uh, inform the title. This is perfect setting for this particular sculpture. It's uh, on a hill surrounded by water and from every angle you can see straight through it and then the, it's got such a presence and with the uh, red legs uh, um, interacting with, with each other from different angles and the lines it creates uh, just creates so much movement. This sculpture is called Yoga and I've always been fascinated by the different uh, poses that it's got. It's actually one of the most difficult sculptures to photograph. It just got more and more complex as I started building it. Uh, but there's a certain calmness to it uh, when uh, viewed from the front, which is nice. And that's also informed the uh, title and it was in an awkward position, sitting with the one arm backwards and then uh, stretching out and holding the toes with his left hand and um, the title immediately um, just came up when I looked at it and I also looked at the various um, holes uh, that it occupied and uh, those negative spaces then uh, made their own shapes. It was really nice to view it here at Nyrox uh, with the uh, different lights on it in the morning, the reflection uh, in the water early in the morning and then in the afternoon when the sun set, it, uh, it's, it was great uh, just seeing the different lights uh, reflecting off it. At first I wanted to uh, make the head solid but then uh, decided on adding more holes to it and just refine it to the uh, bare minimum. This sculpture was done around the time when I was uh, making a lot of unique sculptures in polystyrene and then covering it in uh, wax, heating up different metal instruments and um, making mark surface interest into the sculpture. It, uh, I was working with a lot of uh, forms relating back to rocks and studying different rock shapes and then I fell back onto the color, colorful part of it. Um, so it forms a head and a body, cramped body all into one with the uh, legs. And uh, this negative space also became very important to me and I uh, cut away a lot of it, add a lot uh, to it. And then it formed part of the base uh, in a very solid way. Plus most of it is cast in uh, solid bronze because of the way it's constructed. Some of the bronze uh, did not flow 
to create cavities, so um, it's nicely solid. Uh, it's quite heavy, but it gives us presence as well of heaviness and uh, rock form. This was actually the first in the expandable canvas series, almost like rocks stacked on top of each other. And then I stripped uh, it, uh, all the arms, legs and everything else away, as if it was uh, half discovered and coming out of the ground. Uh, I love the forms and the shapes and how it's etched off in the sky. It's uh, an incredible piece and uh, uh, because it was the first one and the pioneer in the, the whole set, it was actually interesting how the methods have moved on since. The expanded canvas uh, series of sculptures uh, came about after I saw a product, a revolutionary product, used by the and developed by the British uh, Army to, uh, in order to create temporary structures uh, that's very strong. So they combined a mesh which is uh, in the form of a canvas or uh, sheets of uh, fabric impregnated with uh, very strong concrete. So what they would do is, uh, if a bridge for instance is blown up, they would float polystyrene blocks around across a river and lay this fabric over these polystyrene blocks and then just um, wet it and after a while they can drive trucks over it. So it's an amazing structure. Um, so immediately I thought of doing sculptures and especially life-size ones. And uh, by the time I got to do this one, um, a lot of the folds came into, uh, into play. I started folding it and found that it was much stronger once it dried. But it added an incredible uh, um, just effect to it. Um, for the first time I could really take my paintings, uh, which form blueprints of the sculptures, and then turn them into sculptures in three-dimensional forms. And that's when the title comes from. This uh, sculpture's got a lot of uh, animal-like features, uh, and it's part of the uh, evolution on Planet Paul. Um, I decided to uh, leave it in white and just uh, bring out uh, parts of colour because it was a lot smaller than the other sculptures. In order to uh, create different shapes uh, while you're manipulating the material, I screwed in um, uh, quite long uh, drywall screws into the sculpture and added wire uh, to it just to pull it to different sections so that uh, when it's dry it will keep those shapes and the sharp points uh, which is very important in the head to um, in order to create the same movement and textures on the top. Uh, I've since moved on and uh, found different ways to, to um, work around uh, the material in order to create mass and uh, different forms. But it's always like that, uh, you have to go through the process, trust the process and see what uh, you can uh, end up with. Uh, normally I'm quite surprised, uh, it's very intuitively and I'll start off with a section and then you never know where you end up, but uh, I was very, very pleased with the sculpture. This expanded uh, canvas series is actually my favourite uh, in the whole set and um, initially it was going to be uh, double the size and especially in width but as I started uh, cutting back the armature I realised that it would make an incredible um, three-dimensional figure of one of the paintings that I was working on. Uh, for me uh, in the environment and when viewed from the front it actually looks like you've ripped one of the um, characters from a canvas and uh, it's got all the colours that I'm happy with and uh, it uh, really makes me uh, happy when I look at this uh, sculpture. It's got such a presence and uh, the movement is incredible. It was a difficult construction because of the way the uh, legs come out. It reminds me a lot of uh, uh, French art that uh, modern artists used to do. This sculpture is the, uh, also in the expandable canvas series 
uh, a little bit shorter than the others and I constructed it in three sets uh, doing the legs separate from the body and then adding the head afterwards. Uh, it is a bit alien like but I like to think of my sculptures as um, creatures that could have lived uh, 12 years ago and being in the cradle of humankind makes it even uh, even more interesting because I'm always fascinated by hominids or some sort of a human form and uh, that's what I work around. I've done some work before at uh, Forum Hominy just down the road in the Cradle of Humankind where I created a mural called the Purple Hominid and uh, it all had to do with the hominids telling a story from early hominids and found discoveries up until modern human. Uh, the sculptures also from 2006 were made with uh, wire then fiberglass and resin and um, it's based on a game that children play. I used to do these chalk drawings with children uh, outside and uh, they call it, uh, there's a game called four square where they use a tennis ball and they draw, first draw uh, four squares next to each other and then um, play around. Uh, the squares and actually inside the squares but uh, there's so many rules I've tried to follow it but it's uh, impossible but um, I was coming back from uh, New York and on the flights I started making drawings and it was after uh, quite a uh, hectic exhibition in 2004 and up until that point it was something I was working on for about two years and I was quite drained and um, uh, think about the next body of work and uh, I was thinking about this game and then I just drew four squares almost in a window-like form and uh, from there I developed it uh, in wire but then changing the edges uh, just to create a lot of more movement and uh, then added legs um, and feet to the bottom and uh, just two eyes uh, and a red and a yellow and uh, right on the top, but um, I thought of doing that and creating the body also as a, uh, could be a face in, in a way. It's also got a lot of negative spaces uh, um, and you can see right through the sculpture. In this setting of course it's incredible because uh, you can see it as uh, etched off against the sky. And then also from the other side, when you look through it, you see the uh, environment uh, behind it. By the time I was doing this sculpture, I already knew exactly how to manipulate the uh, canvas in, uh, in order to get the legs and the height and, and uh, the different shapes that I was after. And um, it was interesting uh, immediately when I got the height. The back of the sculpture actually is uh, completely white but it's got such a presence. Um, it, it slightly leans uh, backwards, uh, which is great, and that was created on, on purpose. So the round um, um, shapes can also take form and immediately come into play. The front I, I painted with a roller and I wanted the um, uncontrolled uh, look and to, to take up the form of uh, an uh, action painting would. Many thanks for watching, see you next time.